JF Stratford Paddock, and this isn't the brew, even though that's Stephen Alson. This is the Paddock podcast, and I'm annoyed. Why? What, was Joe Smith retired or what? Oh, do you know what I mean? Where is it? Part time, uh, Jay. Me and you on a Friday we're here doing the brew. Yeah, right or wrong? Fact. Fact. Factual. Monday, me and you again. Don't worry about it, Joe. You just got to do what you do. Me and him will keep the channel going. Do you know what I mean? Not a problem. You take your time, son. He's never there. I can't honestly remember last time he even did a video. Can you? We'll have to have a word. Maybe we'll have a word off of him. Do you know what I mean? Off, off camera. Um, so because it's not the brew, unfortunately, Stephen, we're going to have to talk a little bit about oh, Manchester United Football Club. God's sake. I know. We did. Do you know what? I'm derailing this already. We did really well on Friday. <laughs> I think that was our record. We got to 56 minutes, Steve. 56 minutes. Thing is, Brendan doesn't take a breath, does he? No. <laughs> the thing is, right, there's one thing I loved about the Brill on Friday. If you don't know about the Brill on Friday, then you've missed out. Um, it's your mate, like a mate, mate. You, uh, you obviously like got on really well. He's smashing it. So he was chatting away like proper mates and that. He's like that. Da, 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 da. Pretty much got no filter as well. Slightly. A little bit of a filter where he's like, I'll say that one off camera. And when he says that, I'm like, right, okay. <laughs> Let's not press that. Um, and yeah, we, you know, he, he fully... What was that? Oh. <laughs> what was it though? Uh, the members of the board. All right, okay. <laughs> it was nothing. Nothing happened. Um, so yeah, it was... Uh, it was bang on. Um, so if you haven't seen it... What was the point you was making there? You had a point. Yeah, that, I, can't, I can't remember because he's distracting me with what didn't happen. I think I was going down the route of, we didn't speak about football for 56 minutes. But, um, you had your mate on, who's also just won a world title. So there was quite a lot going on there. You and him go way back. You were actually... Don't say this wrong, Wasty. I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes you're excited for a guest on the bridge. Sometimes you're not bothered. You were excited. <laughs> Someone tweeted me and said, Jay, that's the least I've ever seen you talk on the bridge. And I took that as a, a compliment because, you know, it's usually just me and you chatting shit. So it's nice to have someone else doing it for a bit a as well. A third wheel. A third wheel. I reckon he did 60% of the talking. He did. But it was actually entertaining, wasn't it? It was good. Um, so have you not... He's gone back to Thailand today, I think. Has he now? Typical. Um, two reasons people go to Thailand. Sniffing brass. Nearly. Oh, smacking brass. No. Right. With well. lady boys. Right. Yeah. Right. Which. By the way, I didn't do that when I went to Thailand. If Mrs. is watching. Look, it is what it is. <laughs> the uh, the other one is is kickboxing, right? Ah, yeah. Of course. I mean, of course, that was my, my <laughs> first guess. Um. And it's so funny how people, so many people go to Thailand, you know, zero interest in combat sports. <laughs> See what I mean? I went to Thailand, I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't even know they did it over there. Thai boxing. <laughs> who'd, who'd have thunk it? <laughs> My mate was in his Thai boxing. His dad, actually, Ronnie Green, was a Thai boxing champion. When I was growing up in Partington. Uh, we are going to talk about some football and stuff, though, because I want to talk to you a little bit about football. Lady boys, it's such a regional thing, though, isn't it? What do you mean? Like, they're all pro at it. There's not like Senegalese lady boys, is there? Ah, right. Okay, you mean it's very much a thing yeah, over there. It's their and thing. Else. Like it is their thing to a degree. No one like the New Zealand fucking lady boys isn't a thing. That is a Samoan a, lady boys. Not it's like it's a Thai thing. That's the, they have just took it and owned it. That's their thing. See that they need to get a bit more Brexit. Now we know they are Brexit. That's ours. That. Hey, <laughs> we're not having anyone coming over here gagging in on it. This is our thing. Isn't it mad that? Just hyper regionalized. I love the fact that you're, you've thought about it to the point of you're making a, a, a fairly good point. No, I don't I'm, know. I'm gonna be honest, Jay, I haven't really thought about it that much. But have you not? When you think, when you do think about I it, I thought that's like, why you were googling it before. All oh, right. I thought that was what you were doing upstairs. No, you research bookmarking it when you said like, <laughs> Leave, "I'll be in my office on my own for a bit. I don't want to be disturbed." Uh, <laughs> We'll get to that later. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the semi-final. I'm trying. I'm trying here. I'm trying. Spur Spurs implosion. Um, um, the FA Cup semi-final. They were shit. They was a level of shit. Right. Who was that shit? That makes our, them. 
who, who you talk, who Spurs. Sh- right. Who was shitter, Spurs or Craig Paulson? Or are you going to be like, oh, you know. Do you know what? No, I don't I think w- Ideal was... referees every week, he's actually really good. N- mm. Well, yeah, but also, apart from not booking Brighton players, yeah. I don't really think he got anything majorly wrong. Really. Yeah, but you, apart from blowing JFK's brains out, I don't think Lee Harvey Oswald did much wrong. But and that is a big I'm thing. I'm going to be honest with you, Jay. I don't think he did it. <laughs> right. You know what? I looked into it. You I spent years. It. Right, researching it, printing off stuff off the internet. We just got in there in our house and a printer, and I just discovered drugs. <laughs> so, and I'd watched JFK the film. So I decided I was going to investigate it. Back and, and to the left. Yeah, and then back it, and to, to the, the left. left. Back, back and to, and the, to left. the left. Um, and at the end of it all, decidedly, Avi Oswald did it. Um, but yeah. There's no uh, fucking way he did it. There's no way he did it. I want to go. Definitely, Arthur. Apparently. Oh, here we go. This is where Mr. Army Man tells me how the shot wasn't right and all this. Well, no, they clearly had multiple firing positions. Like, some, I think someone says it. If you're going to do him, you do it because it, I think they drive up to him and then turn and then go away from him. The, the, the best method is as they're coming towards him. Maybe the guy that was just about to assassinate the president wasn't thinking clearly. Maybe well, he, he was thinking it. clearly enough to get Maybe three shots off on it a second, yeah. In how long? And I think, he, mm, I think he did. Um, but anyway, we can discuss that on the brew. It's a good topic for the brew. That like, apparently Fergie's well into that. I think that's his thing. Yeah, that's his shit. Yeah, man. Maybe we could get him in on that. Listen, we ain't going to talk any football outside of yeah. If 90, we said 90, to him, can we just talk about ninety one? And JFK. JFK. I think he'd go for that. Because he does <laughs> things he likes to do, doesn't he? So I think he'd be and like... we brought a £900 bottle of wine for you. <laughs> go on, then. I've got a gift we can give him as well. That he won't have. What's Trevor Paddock would That. Two things he won't have. Uh, no, there was something I was going to say about the JFK thing as well. Go on. Tell me. Because I wanted... I can um, think what it was now. You interrupted me. I'm sorry. We keep doing that, don't we, on this channel? Um, we need to stop it. Yeah, yeah you'll say... You said about the shot and all that and him coming from the front and that would have been the perfect shot and I don't know. Yeah, I just, I, I just think a lot of fuckery afoot. Maybe, yeah. There's, it's worth investigating further. I'll reopen my investigation. In the the bit, whole so. way he like got on his toes and or didn't necessarily get on his toes and was having a fucking can of coke in the canteen and all that lot afterwards. Yeah. Not the actions of a man that's just shot the president. Then he went to the pictures. See, that? that's on top. I think that there's something going on there. It's a great film was on. So what if you just shot the president? It's Kevin Costner. Who, by the way, if you've not seen Yellowstone, He's you angled. Oh my god. Do you like Kevin Costner? Cost or Costner even? Uh I is is he a divisive character? You have your funny ways though. I never know with you. Well he can act. So he's not oh. Nicolas Cage. Right, okay. <laughs> right. I like him. I think he's alright. Who's a better actor, Nicolas Cage or Jason Statham? Because they both just play the same fucking guy in every film. Jeff Goldblum does that. Yeah, I think that's what you book. Yeah. It's just like, I'm going to be Jeff Goldblum in this film. Yeah. I mean, Al Pacino in the last 20 years has also done that. Yeah. Al Pacino hasn't acted since the turn of the century. No. There's a, there's he a... just turns up and shouts. Uh, you got your head all the way up it. That's um, it. That, that sounded like Mr. T, by the way. My impression of Al Pacino. So apologies to all concerned. Um, yeah, Yellowstone yeah. will make you think about buying a ranch. In Montana and fucking off. See, that's you though, that. I'm not that guy. It'll probably make me think about There's also a fucking firefight scene in there which will get really? your dick moving, honestly. Is it, it accurate? Was, it was fucking good, Jay. Was it? It was you're well quite fussy at things like that. Do you know, right, think about this, right? You always point out the flaws in right? Hollywood film firefights. As an ex-drug user or abuser... Fair enough. How many films have drug scenes in them? One in three. Right. So what if you'd have seen someone doing cocaine by fucking smacking it on the forehead? Yeah, I get you. It would take you out of the film, right? Yeah. So it's just the same with any sort of combat or military sort of style films. You're, you're in it, you're in it, you're in it, you're in it. Ultimate Force is a fucking great one for it. So there's a radio, I think it is, a 351 radio off the top of my head, PR 351. It's I, the Klansman I, variety if you're into that sort of thing, I right? Think you're right. It is a throat mic. It's a throat mic with an earpiece, okay? Yep. It's got these two big sensors that go in your fucking throat. It's not a walkie-talkie that you fucking shout for help into, okay? And is at some point, someone grabs this radio, 
and shouts into it like it's a fucking walkie-talkie. And all right, it's Ultimate Four, so he wasn't suspect. We, you know, we've already suspended reality anyway. Yeah. But you just go oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I get that. Yeah. I get it as well because you've lived it, you know all that, you look at it, you know the technical it stuff. It just takes you out of it. So yeah. anything, right? So if you're a piano player, right? Yeah. And there's a scene when someone's playing Mozart and it's some Burke just going over the keys, you as a piano player are going to lose your shit. Yeah. It's just that X Forces veterans, there's a lot more of us and there are a lot more films based on that genre yeah. than there are piano players why though because I or... thought that all the sort of Hollywood directors and filmmakers got people like you to come and make sure they were getting that sort of thing right there's usually a lot more high profile than, than me but yeah no, there's uh, you know uh, military advisors served and know. military advisors is a role that a lot of fucking people end up going into yep I just don't think they get listened to I think they go ah, that's a load of bollocks because it's got to happen yeah it's got to happen I mean some of the berets in and, and headdress that you see in, in combat that you just make you Even think that. who the fuck authorised this right. but I reckon they go well it looks cool so fuck you that is a good point as well because to people like me who haven't been there I wouldn't notice it and it might look more what I think it's like if that makes sense I might think that is what it's like when it really isn't hmm. and you might well that's not what it's like but in the Hollywoodized version of things it makes sense in that yeah, respect yeah like uh, grenades and this that and the other they're not fireballs it is a puff of dust yeah and a load of like sparks really literally just sparks like I had a rocket land fucking far too close for comfort um, in between a load of helicopters on right. the on the airfield in Iraq and didn't know what it was because I'd never seen one right and you go what the fuck was that a rocket <laughs> 240 mil Chinese rocket just kills every fucker within a 10 meter radius. It Jesus landed Christ. about fucking 50 meters away. Right. And you're thinking, is that what I think it was? Because you're expecting like a fireball yeah. and a big kaboom, and it's not. It's like a <laughs> kind of noise. What was, what was the hurt locker like? Was that realistic? No. Because that was the one that won Foskers. Yeah, but you, like the guys just what? Climbing the wall and leaving camp? That'd be like watching a prison film where the guy was like, it got dark, and then I went, oh. Yeah. No. No, unless you're in phone cross. Um, right, let's get into some of these comments, and then we will try and talk something about football. Rambo's real, though. Rambo. <laughs> documentary. <laughs> yeah, it is um, a documentary. Though. If you want to know how you know the Soviet Union lost the Afghanistan war, Rambo 3. Is... Lone Survivor's not real either, in a lot of ways. Apparently that story's a load of bollocks. Shut up. Apparently he didn't fire a round. There's a lot of talk that he never fired a fucking round. Well, you know. I mean, apart from, so here, there's a, there's a few bits of it that are real. He is the lone survivor of that operation. He did fucking crawl down a mountain. Right, okay. But so, which is heroic on its own. Yeah, you don't, you don't need, need to, to embellish. Yeah. Uh, maybe the, the pitch thing went, here's what happened. He gets caught out, he's on his own. Someone just said, best three army films. He climbs down a mountain and they went, no, we need him to kill loads of people. Otherwise, we're not going to get this green lit. While you think about that, I'm going to read some comments. Matt G says, 20 years since that epic real uh, Champions League tie, the game we knew Bex was leaving, where do you think he'd have fit into the 06, 09 team if he'd stayed? If you don't know what happened there, Beckham was dropped, and it wasn't only Gunnar Solskjaer who played in his position, who had been playing in the position of right winger for a few games leading up to that and doing rather well. It was one Sebastian Veron. So Fergie more or less played Veron out of position rather than playing David Beckham. Yeah, we, we also transitioned to a 4-5-1 slash early version of 4-3-3, rather than, we were rigid 4-4-2, and that was one of the reasons we didn't have a lot of control in Europe, was we were just having it. Mm. You know, we'd gone from having essentially four attackers, two wingers, even though Beck's played a bit more in midfield, four attackers with two midfielders to three midfielders, three attackers, mm. with a lot more balance to it, but it was a bit boring. And it was very heavily reliant. Because we'd gone from two strikers to Rude, it was reliant on Rude to score. And then if he didn't have a, a good game or he could get marked out of the game because he was on his own, the wingers we had weren't your modern inverted forwards. They were old school wingers when now just being when, asked to push up. When do you up. feel like it changed from like the 4-4-2, the wingers of like Kinchelskis and Beckham and Giggs and Sharp to... Because now I hate, run, uh, well, I, I hate these stats that go Mo Salah compared to Giggs. They're not the same no, positions. No, it's different. It's totally different. Beckham didn't play in the same position as even what Anthony does for United. Do you know what? 
when did Steed Malbronk play for Spurs? That is a very was he about 2005-06 or was he a bit later? I was not expecting that question. I'm not going to lie, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I was up for a Barclays name, lads. You've, you've, you've when did Steve in. Malbrand play for Spurs? He's signed for Spurs in 2006. Hmm. No, he's he's too late then, I think. He's one of the first that I remember being a genuine inverted... Well, he was Ronaldo at Fulham aside. for five years. Maybe he was at Fulham. Because he, he was at Fulham for 2001 to 2006. And he played 172 league games for them. As he did rather well, 32 goals, not too shabby. It might... I, it, it certainly wasn't him being a trailblazer. There's, there's been inverted but forwards you know as long as there's been forwards. But I think in a Prem, I think that was one of the first ones that I saw that was like, was he a left winger that was a right foot or a right foot that was left? I can't actually fucking remember which way around he was. Um, hopefully this will tell, but he just says midfielder. So that's not really very helpful at all. Um, yeah, I mean, he did bits at Fulham. And also, he obviously did bits there because you get the move to Spurs, you can be doing well. Do you know what I mean? Like... It's a, you know, it's a step up. I think for United, it was having the flexibility of, of Rooney and, and Ronaldo and Tevez was when we was able to go to quite a fluid kind of forward lineup. Yeah. And, and the likes of Nani and that were, you know, inverted forwards rather than your traditional style wingers. That's what I mean. And now it's like wingers are, wingers who are actual wingers um, are a thing of the past. Um, I'm going to read some more super chats in a minute. First of all, I want to remind you of something, yeah? Spring has sprung, and our friends at Manscaped, the leaders, yeah, they are the leaders. There's no one above them. In Below the Waist Grooming, have the best tools for some spring cleaning in your pants. Trust me, yeah? You trust me, don't you? I do trust you. Good lad. Your confidence will be blooming like the flowers. Look your best this spring and join the other 8 million men, and that is, you know, Unreal how quickly that has risen. I remember sitting here when it was four million men. It wasn't that long ago. And now it's eight million men. So call it my maths. It's doubled. Who trust Manscaped? Use the code Devils20 and you get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com because they're here to change the way you look after yourself down there, yeah? They've got the performance package. I don't know what you're gonna say, Stay. You're gonna go, is it the performance package 1.0? No. We're is past it, that. Yeah. That's not even... We're not even what, is it the 80s? Yeah, exactly. Get with the programme. Is it the 2.0? No. Three, surely. Surely it's got to be three. No, it's the 4.0. And with that, you get the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. You get the weed whacker nose and ear trimmer. For men of a certain age, like me and Stephen, that comes in very handy. You get the crop preserver, the crop... The, the ball deodorant. Visual aid here as well. And look at that. Hey, that look lovely. Do you know what I mean? Come on. We've got some other stuff down there. But yeah, are you telling me you won't want that in your bathroom next to your toothbrush and all that? Well, I'd say it will be next to it, but next to your ball preserver and your crop deodorant and all that. Your ball deodorant, your crop preserver and your ball deodorant, if you get that one right. And also, your performance box of briefs, yeah? And where are you going to put all this good stuff? In your shed travel bag. That's where you're going to put it. I know what you're thinking. You can't be getting all this. Made from real testicle hair and skin. Isn't it? No. Oh. I don't know the legalities of making things up. So, even though we jest, I'm not going to. I thought it was made from the ball bags of seven million men. Um, yes. Potentially it could be, but it isn't. Um, so, you get all that. You get the lawnmower 4.0. You get the crop preserver, the crop toner, or the ball toner, sorry. You get the shed travel bag. You get the box of breeze with the anti-chafing technology. If Joe was sat here, he'd go, how is your anti-chafing? And I'd say, she's doing better. She's on tablets. Go and check all that out. You get 20% off and free shipping, which in this day and age is a minor miracle, isn't it? Free shipping uh, at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you for your spring cleaning. Big thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring this podcast. Um, I'm going to read through some comments and then you can give me your answer about your three favourite war films. Okay. Resonating Silence says, can we spend two minutes today on how good Wazza was? Rooney was fucking unbelievable. He really was. If you could have any player from any United era in the team now, would it be him? He offers so much, doesn't it? I'm not sure he's the exact thing that this team needs. Yeah. I think this team would probably benefit from more like a Rude, maybe. Yeah, I, I can or, see Or that. an RVP. Someone in the box all the time. Yeah. Rude or, or Robbie Van Persie, no, I think, would probably be um, you know, sensational. 
I said that the other day. I said I wouldn't mind Andy Cole in this team, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, Matt G says, 20 years... Oh, no, sorry, read that one. Uh, Brian Casey says, The Brew 2.0, I love Mondays. Now, Michael Dyson, welcome to the Academy. Oh, no, yeah, he's a member for 40 months. Oh, no, sorry. Michael Dyson's been a member of the Academy for 40 months. Thanks for all your support. He says, Salutations, fellow travellers. Do you think we should sell De Gea and sign a goalkeeper that is both good at goalkeeping and a mystery skill? A mystery skill? Yeah. <laughs> what, like he can decorate an house in half an hour or yeah, something? Yeah, something like that. Do you know what I mean? He can stand on one leg for four days. Um, you, in your post-match discussion against Sevilla, I don't like it when you do this. You're quite logical and balanced. <laughs> I don't like this society, Stephen. It needs to end. And you said to Joe, when he spoke to you about it, and De Gea was, you know, you'd had a stinker. I think we can all agree. And you were like, most clean sheets in the Premier League this season. He's not been a disaster throughout this season is he a priority replacing him a priority for Eric Tenag I think that's the thing would I replace him yes would I replace him first no okay because I think you've got to replace the the, the thing that hasn't even got anything to replace which is a striker can, can I just tell you something you just reminded me I was I got in early yesterday into Wembley um, about 45 minutes before kickoff, and I was watching him De Gea he was in the sort of the goal um, doing it practicing his kicks and you were bang on. You had two goalkeepers or goalkeeping coaches, more or less on the halfway line. You know the drill. Either side of like touching the touch line, and he was hitting balls to him. And I was like, inch perfect passes. Like every time, I was like, he's on it. Do you know what I mean? He looks like he's putting Seville behind him. And the game starts, and I think the first one he did went out. And I'm like, that's really weird. That. Well, do you know what? You can probably get 20 people out of the crowd and probably eight of them would probably be able to make that pass. Yeah. Well, there's a difference in making that pass once that whistle go goes and there's an opposition in front of you. I agree with that. And it just, in some ways, it surprises me a little bit because you think David De Gea, who's played so many games for Manchester United, he's won a lot as well. Let's not forget the guy's won trophies. He's broke the clean sheets record at the club. He's top clean sheets in the Premier League this season. He was, what, in the PFA team of the year, five years or something running or four, five out of six years, I think it was player of the year four times out of five, yet still seems to have this confidence issue at times. And it's really weird to me that. That's like being, you know, I don't know, a striker who's scored 250 goals and he's still on 20 goals this season and yet panics in front of goal. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's Do you know what it is? Uh, players improve by um, improving their weaknesses, not extenuating their strengths. And teams are the same. And unfortunately, a goalkeeper isn't as good as his strengths, is as good as his weakness. Right. A striker can cover up being as good as his strengths and not his weakness. Yeah. Because if his strength is just shitting goals, yeah. that's all anyone's gonna talk about. There's been strikers with no game. Yeah, that's true. But they know where the back of the net is and they'll get picked. Yeah. Because that you get a goal a game out of them and, and that's all you need. Um, and that's not throwing shade at anyone. It's just a fact. Yeah. Like, you know, I haven't got an example of anybody like that off the top of my head, but like, if you scored a goal a game, but everything else you do is shit, you'll still get picked. Yeah. Whereas you can be a goalkeeper with amazing distribution and amazing passing. If the ball fucking gets slung at you and you miss it, and it goes in every single shot, guess what? You ain't gonna be a goalkeeper for very long. So there's there's certain positions protected from you know, their strengths can be the strength and, and their weaknesses are ignored. Being a goalkeeper, it's the other way around. No one gives a shit about your strengths. It's, it's what's your weakness and, and how's that going to affect us? And, and it's the same if you want to improve a team, you have to improve the weakness of that team. Yeah. Um, do you think that someone's making the point of Andrew A says, the Hayes clearances kicks yesterday were mostly good yesterday, Jay. You're just being swayed by the first one being bad. It wasn't just the first one, though, bro. It was. I noticed it a few times. I'm not saying they weren't mostly good, but there was more than just the first one. There was a few I felt that were. And you might argue, well, look at who he's aiming for. Look at he's got to, you know, we're not exactly renowned for our prowess in the air. But there was a few where it was literally just giving it to them. Do you know what I mean? And you think mm, it's, it's still a bit of an issue there. I, I kind of agree with what you're saying. I think Eric Tanag, I don't always believe what a manager says. I think any manager will say positive things about his player unless he's a lunatic like Jose Mourinho. He'll just slag off players that are playing for him week in, week out. So he's going to... But even he won't tell the truth all the time. No. There'll be a reason he's saying what he says. Yeah, he's just and a he will, Yeah, he will cover something up to... Yeah. like he's, The art of deception is Jose Mourinho. Yeah. He's read that book. He might have written a book like right. that. I think he has. Um, whereas Eric Tanag, 
when he says De Gea is my guy, he's great at everything. I don't necessarily think he 100% believes that, but that's what he's saying in public, and I understand it, especially with a goalkeeper who may have confidence issues. Um, so I think if he had unlimited budget or was able to go out and do what he wanted to, I think he would get a goalkeeper. I worry the fact that a striker is going to eat up so much of the budget. We need probably another midfielder. There's still yeah, talk I mean, of a right back coming in. Yeah, there's talk of a right back coming in. I can make a case for a centre half to come in. Yeah. Um, you might raise a little bit by selling one. We all know which one. You don't need to dig it up again. Um, Martin, that's in case anyone's wondering. Um, you arguably need a backup striker. Mm. Well, this is you said something. I don't keep going on about your um, review of, of Sevilla, but there was a lot in there. About you can only probably, I think, buy one striker this summer. Do you not think the scope's about it, though? Because part of me feels like you could go out and get, say, a Harry Kane. We'll get into that in a minute, the, the news on him. And maybe you go out and also get an Evan Ferguson or a, someone of that ilk, a younger striker who costs you 30 million or whatever. Do you think we could do that? Because other teams go out and buy two strikers. We bought two midfielders and so like one was on a free. But it's not, I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility we got. Because what worries me, and I think we saw it yesterday, and you can argue that's an outlier, but we saw Anthony Martial struggle. We saw Volt Vegos come on, run his socks off, and I was impressed with him when he came on. But we're going to be realistic. I don't see him being at Old Trafford next season. I don't think he's going to. He's not going to get you many goals. No, there's been league. a bit of a leak, haven't they already? That like, yeah, cheers, but we'll call you. Yeah, and I think even tonight's lost a bit of confidence in him. So it's like if the if say we get a Kane for example, just using him as a, as an example, he's out for six weeks. Are we relying on Anthony Martial for six weeks, and then he's probably injured for at least four of them? Well, that's what's proven to be the case this year. But you've got to think, United lost, essentially, three and a half strikers last year. Yeah. We did. No, you're right. You lost Cavani. Yeah. And if this had been a couple of years earlier, Cavani probably is a cult hero today. He lost, he lost me when he didn't, didn't go to the eight yard, but I know what you mean. You lost Ronaldo. Yeah. You lost Greenwood. Yeah. And you've only had half Anthony Martial. I mean... So you had four at the club. something to cope with, isn't it? Yeah. Like for a manager. Yeah. You know, so strikers you had now, four that. strikers to cope with. And how many games Anthony Martial started this year? I'm going to guess. Less than 10, I would say. Let me have. Let me get this stats up. Started. Started, yeah. Um, because I know, obviously, it's it's a lot different. Because, yeah, this is the thing. I like Martial, but I hate these, these sort of caveats we have to add. When he plays, when he starts, when he's And the fit. thing is, he started yesterday. It was shit. Yeah, like, that's not been the case recently. But there is an inconsistency. It's not just an inconsistency in his selection availability. There's an inconsistency in his performance. He's not been ten out of ten in every game he's ever played for United. No, and I know some people are sort of painting it out to be that case. Oh, if he just wasn't injured all the time, yeah. But he's also played and been shit. And that's not to say other players aren't, because for some reason everyone has to make this argument so binary that well, what about that player? Yeah, there's nobody that's not been shit in this United team. Casemiro shit yesterday. That was one of his worst games. I think he got like outworked in a big way by mm-hmm. McAllister and Casado. Yeah. You know, let's let's just be realistic about think, who we just are. On that Casemiro front, because I was I think it's about ten games. I'm trying to work it out, sorry. Um Frank Marshall, but I'll get your point. Do you think there's an element of the suspensions of Bookings getting into Casemiro's head? Because I was I was looking at it yesterday and I don't think he played well and it was strange for him that. To, I thought, what's up with him? I, I, in my five things, I, I said, look, you, you've got him, you've got Ericsson, you've got Ericsson's just come back from an injury, not long after dying. Like, you've got all of these other things going on with, with Ericsson, and you, you're essentially playing a two against Brighton, who were going to dominate the ball, and they did, and they made us run and they cut us side to side. It, it just got overrun. Right, okay. And it was two players that have had long seasons, they've had problems in the season. Just got overrun. Yeah, sometimes you don't Casado have to. Casado and McAllister can put a fucking Casado. pace on you, man. Mate, he was decent, wasn't he? Yeah. Aye. Um, right, that's fair enough. Uh, Richard E says, any plans for a Stretford Paddock live tour? Yes. Watch this space. The four of us, bizarrely, you can't get four of us around this table, but you're going to get four of us. In Las Vegas. Yes. <laughs> and New so, York. Yeah. And, yeah. And everywhere else. Everywhere else in between. So, uh do what's this space? We'll give you an update probably next week. Have they week. announced the <laughs> one? No, I don't think so yet. We're going to find that out tomorrow. We'll get everything clarified. So we'll make an announcement either the end of the week or early next week. But yeah, we're doing that. Uh, Siram 
Barlett says, yes, D and J. Hope you're both doing well, lads. I reckon our season would look even better with a Kane. Would you agree? That said, Kane or elite centre forward over a top mid? Bellingham question mark. Kane and Neves or Casado? Phenomenal, by the way. Like you, you could spend half a million. Sorry, half a billion this summer. Yeah. You really could. And yeah. I'd love to see an owner do that and see how it goes. <laughs> do it, let's see. Let's just do it and see. Why don't, we, yeah, why don't we do what Chelsea do? Why don't we just do that? Just go just do it and find out. turbo. Do you know what I mean? Just go, yeah. What, do you want him? No. We'll Imagine doing the news. <laughs> just fucking, I don't yeah. know what's going on. I would love that. <laughs> I would love that. That'd be like, instead of going there going, this is in the Express or wherever, Stan, I don't really believe it. I could go, it's been confirmed because the club have announced it. We've signed another player. If, if we have a summer like that, I'm going to request that the news has a graphic of how much United have spent. Yeah. And I want it graded yeah. by American defence spending. Love that. Love that. Yeah, definitely. Let's do that. Yeah? You're listening, production team. Who You're spent more this week? Is it the Pentagon or Manchester United? Let's Our have survey a look. says <laughs> Manchester United. Again, for the fourth <laughs> week running. <laughs> Mate, that would be class. The US have probably increased their defence spending in reaction to that. Um, we've got a story here from Matt Law in The Telegraph. Football news correspondent. Matt Law, I haven't really got a dog in the fight, to be honest with you, which is usually a good thing. Football journalists, right, they fall into a couple of categories. You've got your Ornsteins. Yeah. You've got your Laurie Whitwells. Yeah. You've got your Henry Winters. Yeah. You got your Matt Dickinsons. Yeah, you got that in the category that I like them and yeah. I trust them. Yeah. Then you've got the ones who work for the formerly great local newspaper now, just people online blog, or the Metro, or the Sun. You, and the, they're, the they're, word journalist is doing a lot of heavy lifting here, Steve. I, ha- I mean, not lie to you. there's articles that's in some of those outlets, and I refuse to call them newspapers. Yeah. Uh, there's outlets. There's some articles in those outlets where they'll put Metro Sport Report. Because they don't even want to put names to it. It's like, this is so ridiculous and so unrealistic and so unsourced, no one's going to put the name to it because we don't want it on our CV. Are you, putting, are you going to write this down? Absolutely not. No, no, I don't, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not, what, no. I'm not doing 400 words on my United and my Messi. So we'll just put Star Reporter. Or on fucking Anthony Martial liking a tweet. <laughs> Why don't you fuck off? Do you know what, right? There's times when I've been out in the rain when I was a reporter, voxing people about their pet names, right? Yeah? Piccadilly Gardens, can you tell me? A survey's just come out on our favourite pet names, the nation's favourite pet names, and it's raining and I'm asking people this. And that is still being a journalist, more so than sitting in an office and just making what was, stuff what was, up. Um, was it categorised? Like, is there a, like a favourite rabbit name? No, and I think is it was Some of them were like really weird, like Killer was a popular one. For a goldfish? Yeah, like who calls a pet Killer? And there was a few like just bizarre ones, like like normal names, like Penelope and stuff. You're like, what? Yeah, very odd. Um, it's my cat, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? What is this? Um, my dog, Keith. Keith. <laughs> it's Family Guy, innit? What's a dog called, Brian? Well, my, our cat's called Jimmy, because my daughter named him. And there's no reference to that. There's no no family member, no the hero, no one she likes or knows of. It was just Jimmy. And we just went with it. It was your cat, call it what you want. Um, Matt Law, who you may or may not trust, we don't really have a massive opinion on him, which is probably a good thing for Mr. Law. Says Manchester United. <sighs> He's losing me in his first sentence, Stephen. I'm not going to lie to you. Fuck it off if he hasn't. <laughs> I'm going to read it to you. Okay. And you can tell me your level of belief in this. Manchester United have started to make attempts to find out what it will take to sign Harry Kane. With expectation increasing that the striker will not sign a new Tottenham Hotspur contract this summer. Roll it back. Yeah. They've started. Started to make attempts to find out what it will take to sign Harry Kane. There are four. It's not, not justifications. What's the... Not classification. What's the word I'm looking for here? Um, I would love to be that guy and tell you, but I don't. Get involved in the comments and the there chat. There are four. What word is we are struggling? Justifications. To find. 
that caveats, are someone says yeah ca- so caveats. there are four caveats yeah. here to a load of old bollocks yeah so um, United are starting we're starting right yeah, go on okay so Manchester United have started oh have started so we've started to to make attempts to make attempts we've not done it we've not made an attempt to find out we're starting to make attempts to find out what it will take to sign Harry Kane with expectation increasing that the striker will not sign a new Tottenham Hotspur contract this summer. Right. Are we trying to kick a flyaway into our chimney? Right? Because if, if I said, Jay, I'm going to start to make attempts to kick this flyaway 32 feet in the air and try and land it in my chimney, you'd be going, you might be there all day. Yeah. Yeah? You might fluke it and get it in the first hour, but you're probably going to be there all day, especially this wind. Yes. Right? Now, if you want to find out how much Harry Kane's going to cost you, there's two ways of doing this. His brother is his agent. Right. And I reckon he's answering every call that came in today. He's answering telemarketing calls, Charlie, old Charlie fucking Kane today. Yeah, right. He's on. like, hello, yes, I will answer your survey. Yeah. Like, he's, he don't give a fuck who's ringing the phone him today. He's answering that phone call. If you go, hello, Charlie Kane, Manchester United, he's going to go, thank fuck for that. Thank right? you. He's picking that phone up, right? Yeah. The other one is to go to the Dark Lord and ask Daniel Levy how much he wants. Right. Now, oh, there are no other way, like, what are you doing? Peeping around the corner going, how much reckon Harry Kane's going to cost? Like, that's not making inquiries. No. That's being weird. No, you're right. And, yeah, it's that simple. And now is probably the time to do it after a 6-1 defeat where they're struggling in their top four race. And it's like, is he going to stay? Maybe. Is he going to stay at a team that's not in the Champions League? Here's the thing, Jay. Probably less right? likely. This is how bollocks this news article is. Okay. If you give me 20 minutes, I reckon I could get Daniel Levy's phone number. I think you do it so knowing you. Give it 20 because people might be on the loop. All right, okay. I genuinely, genuinely think I could get Daniel Levy's phone number in 20 minutes. I and I do I not work for Manchester United the last time I checked. Yeah. So how? what is your attempt? Yeah. What the fuck is your attempt? Have you just written him, Harry Kane down on a whiteboard somewhere and gone, we're thinking about it. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? It just sounds a bit... It's just too wishy-washy it's, it's to be real. Wishy-washy. These get-out clauses, he can go, well, I said they only started making inquiries. Like... Come on, Matt Law. Matt. Are you making inquiries to how much he costs? Yeah. Right, well, I fucking Googled a yacht. There's a yacht, right? Can't remember yeah. the name of it. It was 198 million. Right. Right? Yeah. I know how much it costs. Yeah. Did I have any intention of buying it, Jay? Not really. Not this week. Not this week. Do you know what um, I mean? Maybe you work another... 7,000 years. Well, we don't know what the end of the month's going to bring to it. Well, that's true. You never know. That I can but do you know it. what I mean? Like, you can go and find out how much stuff costs. No problem. Easily. Yeah. Like you say, you can get in touch with Levy, you can get in touch with the player's agent and make a decision there and move forward with it. We heard... Qualifications. That was it. Some excellent qualifications. Four of them in a row that all give you a get-out clause when someone goes, that was a load of bollocks that you wrote there, wasn't it? I hate that, you know. Uh, Richard E, I don't know if it's Richard E. Grant, I don't think it is, it just says Richard E. Is he a United fan? Richard E. Grant, is it? I feel like he is. Google I, it. I think he'd be a good guest in on the brew. Richard E. Grant. Who do you reckon has done more beat you or him? Is he into that? I didn't know that. Was he a film star in the 90s? Good point, well made. Um, like asking if a radio DJ in the 70s, no man. Um, I know where you're going with that, I'm well censored. It doesn't say he isn't, so we'll take it that he is. <laughs> That's how we roll. Uh, he says, exclusive, Manchester United have maybe considered to think about the possibility inquiring as to what it could possibly take to book a meeting with someone who met Harry Kane once 15 years ago. Um, Phil, Philip Collier just says, uh, sorry, says, just call him with nail. Uh, Cal Smith says, sounds like a classic MEN article. Um, Miles says, I don't Far want... Far too well researched yeah. on MEN. I don't want Kane personally. Do you want Kane? I'm not. Forget that article. It's meaningless. Do you want Harry Kane? Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd take him. I'd take him as well. Um, what did you make of Casemiro's dancing? What? Casemiro doing all this business when the penalties were going on? Because didn't see it. Did you not? No. Because some were saying he was telling De Gea to make himself bigger in the penalties. Others were saying he was just being a bit of a loon. Who gives a fuck? 
Did we win? We won. I think he was Move on. playing 4D chess to put off. Who was it he missed? Solly March. I didn't even watch any of him, to be honest. I had me back to him. Yeah, I thought that. Someone messaged me and went, I always thought it was bollocks that you didn't watch penalties. And I've just seen your face in the wrong way. <laughs> in the stadium? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't confident with the pens. No, two reasons. One, David Hayes in net, not been He doesn't say penalties, does he? Not Whether you like him or not, he doesn't say penalties. That's not his thing. Um, and then we went second. Does the crowd play a part? Are you bothered about that? Why was it at their end and they took first pen? Because generally it goes, I'll win the toss, so I'll go first. You go, cool, we're doing it at my end. Maybe we really lost the toss. Maybe it was like, heads, mate, wasn't even close to be. It was captain by the time, De Gea won it. Yeah. <laughs> so Maybe he went, we'll go second. Yeah, well, we're going second. What? I mean, what? I mean oh no, it doesn't matter. And we'll go, right, we'll do it, all right. That's right. The only, the, I can't think of any other circumstances apart from he said, we'll go second. But statistically, it's, you, you lose, this, you yeah. lose, yeah. You lose penalties if you go second. That's weird, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah. That's why they're interested. Why would they change the football rules apart from the fact that it's massively weighed to um, you lose him if you go second? The fact that there's such a statistical um, significance of going second means that you lose penalties so much more often that they're thinking of changing the rules to the ABBA um, method. Really? That's the only. Why would they change a rule like that? Right, it's yeah. so simple. Yeah, yeah. You just continue to do it, but it's so how sig- the, uh, statistically how long significant. Been going for, they're only thinking now, sorting it out. It's mad that, isn't it? But they've they've been trialing them in in youth tournaments and stuff like that, so they've got the data on the ABBA ones being way better. Who took our first penalty in 08? Who took our first penalty in 08? Who took our first penalty? In? I can see it. I'll give you a clue. Hang on, no, don't. I don't okay. want a clue. I don't it wasn't want a clue. much of a clue. Wasn't Giggs? Wasn't nope. Ronnie? Nope. Wasn't Anderson? Nope. I can't think of the fuck they took the other ones. It's always the one that goes under the radar. Did Owen Argrave take one? He did, but he wasn't the first one. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You mentioned him briefly. Tevez. Yes, got it in one son. Um, I can't read this name because it's in. It's not in the English alphabet, so apologies. Uh, but have a go. Really? Is it the super chat? Yeah, the yellow one. Oh, I got you. That's um, Daniel. Daniel said, if you could add one player from the 99 team to our team, who Rocky. would it be? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Part of me, yeah, I mean, Roy Keane in that midfield just changes everything. He just does. He's the box to box in that yeah, midfield. Yeah, he just, I mean. Because people, a lot of people, younger people only remember him as being like a proper Makalele kind of midfielder. No, no, no. No. Would you, who comes out then? Is it Ericsson for him? Or was it, is it Fernandez? Because that's a similar style. I'm not going to no, say. Uh, Ericsson or Casemiro. I think, I think Eric, I think Bruno, Casemiro and Keane. <laughs> mate. I mean, but the thing is, the four of them, they all play a different back. Like, you know, the way Nicky Butt came in and Skulls came in sometimes. You know what I love about Nicky Butt coming in? He come in and, and Fergie went, well, you're not playing in the FA Cup final. I can't risk you in that. If you're playing in the Champions League final. All right, nice one. <laughs> he moaned, straight in. He moaned, though. Yeah. So, not only missing out in the FA Cup, you're straight in in the Champions League Do you know final. what? I think Fergie got it wrong in the Champions League final. I love the fact that you second guess the greatest manager in the history of football. But that's what what it's all about. Right. David Beckham's United best player. Yeah. Gary Neville says we didn't even start playing until he came back over to the right hand side. We started with Ryan Giggs on the right hand side. We started with Blomquist on the left. Yeah. Fergie knew he fucked up playing Blomquist, but kept him on because he'd made the decision and told him early. And he goes, never tell him that early, but I told Blomquist he was starting. Right. And he goes, never tell people that early in a final. Yeah. Apart from obviously the ones like Nicky Butt who knew. Yeah, yeah. What we should have done is Johnson yeah. and Nicky Butt yeah. Gigs on the left, Beckham on the right. Keep everyone in the same roles that they're used to rather than completely fuck it up for a final biggest right. game of the season. Yeah. Bring in David May. What? Or, or someone else at centre half alongside Yap Stam. The only got to do is just watch Stam, aren't they? Right, okay. Neville Irwin, York and Cole. Forget the person you suggested. Wes Brown don't care if he's 19. That's a good point. 
Yeah. Wes Brown could have done the job. Okay, I agree. Him and Yap Stamp, <laughs> behave. Do you know what I mean? Who's it? What's his name? Kirsten Yank. Kirsten? Kirsten Yanker. Kirsten Yanker. Um, they could have handled that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it was, right? It makes me laugh when people go, 99, what a game. No. Worst game awful. of a fucking scene. Yeah, it was 90 Not minutes. quite Liverpool. No. But it was, was a bit of a shagging. It was. And it was like that point where you're like, just blow the whistle. This is done. We're out. Should have been 3 0. Yeah. We've, you know, we've just almost given up. Um, but then you only remember the, the final score, don't you? So that's all that matters. And that's all that matters in the final, is yeah. getting over the, over the line. We played well for arguably a fucking minute. <laughs> your, mate, your mate played well, actually. To be fair, Beckham had a good game. Um, Bruno Fernandes, I don't know if it's the right one, says, he's been a member of the academy for 16 months. Thanks for your support. Steve, thoughts on Black Hawk Down, one of my favourites. Any other similar better movies you would recommend? Hollywood as fuck, but I, I agree. It's got, it's got some bits that are pretty good in it. Black Hawk Down's a good, a good entertaining film. I think this shows a lot of realism about what might go off if you fuck up in a city centre somewhere. And some of the difficulties are, are getting to stuff. And that was a bad fucking day at the office, that for the... I think it was the Rangers, American mm -hmm. Rangers. Um, on the best war films, Apocalypse Now. Oh, that's a good one. I liked Dunkirk Me. This is where me and you disagree, but obviously I'm not coming from the point of view of any realism. Well, I also wasn't film. at Dunkirk, so I haven't really got any well, real that's world a good experience point. Yeah, for that. You're not that old, are you? Um, I, I think Saving Private Ryan is almost overlooked because it's of of course of course it's good mm. it's fucking sensational it's almost too good to be considered yeah. so you almost just gloss over it like yeah of course like saying right right oh really yeah I mean, I went, of course. that was the first film i went to see in the traffic center what right. and we smoked a load of weed before we went there and it's proper surround sound <laughs> because cinemas you remember cinemas they used to be like a speaker you get on your laptop now and a screen the size of your telly imax are pretty good now yeah the whole fucking gaff rumbles that was it and um when we went to see Saving Private Ryan, it was like the first, like this big new cinema that's open at Travis Centre and it was proper. And like those first 20 minutes were horrible. I was uh, relieved when I saw Tom Hanks' face because I knew it was about to get blown off. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, I like Platoon. Platoon's a good one. Because uh, you know what's good about like films like Platoon? Yes, it's Hollywood eyes, but Oliver, Oliver Stone went to, to Vietnam, didn't he? He was served two tours. All right, so he's done from someone. So he's, he's got skin in the game and he knows what he's on about. And also Captain Dale... Dale Dye, he was in it as a captain. That was actually his military advisor, and he's like he served as well. So I, I was, I used to be a bit of an Oliver Stone fanboy, hence the JFK interest. I liked We Were Soldiers with Mel Gibson. Yeah. I think it's Hollywood as fuck, but I think it also illustrates the complete and utter shit show of landing in the fucking jungle and trying to just occupy bits of the jungle from the air. What all that was about, I don't know. Yeah. So they probably did get a, a fucking shoe in like that, and I think it's based on. Something that actually happened as well. I don't know how yeah. Hollywood eyes it yeah. was, but I enjoyed the film. Um, I think what of us. So I mentioned Lone Survivor. There's bits of that that are pretty good. There's not that many modern ones that. I mean, Hurt Locker got a lot of thing in it. There's bits of Hurt Locker that's pretty good. Yeah, I can smell Hurt Locker. Yeah, weirdly. yeah. When I watch it, I can smell that dust. That dust is never going to leave. What's the one that's not? An, it's not a war film. It's about. The Taking of Bin Laden, what's that called? Oh, Zero Dark Thirty? Yeah, I watched that. Not I've only that. watched that about 30 times. I like that one. Yeah, because there was some I think that was a little bit hammed up. Controversy over it, because apparently they said the waterboarding or whatever didn't directly help find him. In the oh, we pretending we don't waterboard people? No, 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 I'm We're not trying to do it to my fucking kids, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> um, not both of them, only, you, one, only one of them. Right, fair enough. The young one. <laughs> um, no, the, obviously the war. She's one. four, she's resilient. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's character building. Um, but they were saying that, obviously the war, but we all know that, but it didn't directly lead to, it was, they felt there was a propaganda element to it. That's what some, I don't know. That's what some have claimed. A million percent. I think uh, 300 has got a fucking serious propaganda element to it. The, the one with the Spartans? Yeah. In what, what way? Oh, the fucking Aryan Greeks and these Persians. Yeah. 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 They might as well have wore a fucking... And who sells them out? Union Jack. Who sells them out? The disabled fella. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So There's a bit yeah. of propaganda element Very on that one, I thought. Yeah, right wing. Good point, actually. I've not thought of that, about that. Uh, Abinav Verma, who's always in the chat and the comments. Thanks for your support, Abinav. Uh, so, Steve, how did you control Joel coming up with absolute nonsense about yesterday's match and blaming De Gea for his pass to Maguire? 
Was it water off a duck's back? Yeah. Bit of pinch of salt and all that sort of stuff if I can still start throwing in sayings. Yeah. Uh, also, on the... We'll I'm going to wrap up, by now. the way, because you've got a video coming out in a minute. Um, Kajaki. Kajaki is about Afghanistan, and it was a day that I was working. Right. Um, it's a little bit Hollywoodized, a little bit. Yeah. And there's a couple of scenes in there, like the lads have gone running, like around the dam, that didn't fucking happen. Yeah. Um, so th there's a bit of scenes at the start where they're like chatting to locals and stuff, and they've just like been doing fizz. Yeah, didn't fucking happen. No. But it's a lot about the way they dress, the way they talk, the way they communicate. They had excellent advisors on Kajaki, and it's a really well made film. And again, I can fucking smell it. Um, took me a few watches to get through that one. Really? Yeah, okay. and about about a fucking crate of Budweiser as well. That says a lot then. If it's not really, um, it's got you. so it was good. Kajaki, I really like Kajaki. Kajaki, I've never heard of it. I'll check that out then. Because obviously, if you think yeah, it's... it was well, it was while I was there, so it was a um, particularly poignant one. But it's a, it's a good one. It's a, there aren't a lot. I mean, actually, Danny Boy, which is, I don't know if it's classed as a film. BBC did it. Right. Okay. Danny Boy was was a good one. It was more about the um, the investigation that happened following it. So there was, uh, there was a, I think it was, called, it was a checkpoint, I think, at Danny Boy, and there was a, an armoured sort of unit. I'm not sure what unit it was. Um, and there was an accusation of some prisoner mishandling, I think some, um, I don't know if he was accused of shooting someone that was unarmed or something along those lines. I think the investigation went on for a long fucking time. Uh, ultimately, um, British soldiers were cleared from it. And I think one of the stinks at the time was it was basically some people were being told, oh, if you put this fucking claim in, you'll get dough, essentially, to just, r just random people around the area in Iraq. So they were putting all sorts of mad claims in, but they were all getting investigated, which ultimately is a good thing, because I think having transparency and in investigations is, is the correct yeah, thing yeah. to do, I but fucked a lot of people about, uh, and ultimately they did nothing wrong. Uh, Tony, Pierce, welcome to the Academy. Just before we wrap up, we have got an... Uh, that's, you know, just join the members. Uh, we've got a members vid that's gone up as well, my little vlog from my trip to Wemberley. Um, so go and check that out. Uh, stay quickly, your Wally of the Week. I'll say quickly so we can get this out before your video comes out. Um. I haven't really got any major Wally of the Week. Should we just say Tories? Yeah. All right, he's going to tour it. I'll go Craig Paulson because I don't share his <coughs> objectivity with it. Andrew A says Diane Abbott, and you might have a point. <sighs> ah, Diane, aren't they? What are you doing? <laughs> hey, seriously. <sighs> Unreal. Um, yeah, thanks for that, Steve. Go and check out, what's your video out now? It's just coming out now, what's it about? Scout Report. Scout Report on whom? I did a couple today, Jay, because as you know, I did the wrong one, and Ronaldo was moaning. Yes, he so was. So I don't know which one was the right one. Right, okay. <laughs> so there is a mystery though. scout report. And there's another one coming later this week. Dad. Yeah, of course there is. Go and check out Steve's channel for that. Uh, big thanks as well to Manscaped for sponsoring. Oh, yeah, Fury was good as well with Brad Pitt. Oh, yeah, the one in the in the tanks. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, there you go. See? Um, so go and check out Steve's channel. Big thanks to Manscaped. Don't forget to check out the link in the description uh, using the code. Um, what's the code? It's Devils20. Uh, uh, you get 20% off and free shipping. That's been Stephen Allison. I've been Jay Motty. This has been the Paddock Podcast. Thanks for watching.